So I'll uh, talk about uh, modeling uh, some solar wind uh, uh, flows and its interaction with interstellar medium. This is part of our pro project and uh, uh, a lot of people collaborated with us here and I especially acknowledge the Chomba team led by Phil Kalel at Berkeley Lab. Uh, key challenges are the following actually. Uh, uh, space plasma is collisionless first of all, and collisions, Coulomb collisions are very rare. But fortunately, because of scattering of ions on, on magnetic field fluctuations, we can apply MHD equations, ideal MHD equations to model the plasma flow. But on the other hand, uh, uh, solar wind interacts with the interstellar medium, and the interstellar medium, there are three times more neutral atoms than ions. That's why collisions or charge exchange between uh, neutral atoms and ions should be taken into account. But on the other hand, in our computational region, which I will show you, uh, the number of those charge exchange collisions can be less than 10 per computational region. That's why to model the transport of neutral particles, we must solve the Boltzmann equation. The ball, but when charge exchange occurs, neutral becomes ion, ion becomes neutral. So a newly created ion will have the properties of the parent neutral, and the properties will be completely different from the properties of the thermal ions in the solar wind. And there will be no time to, for thermodynami uh, thermodynamical equilibrium to be established, right? That's why we need to model the evolution of the uh, non-thermal ion distribution function kinetically as well. So this is actually explains how uh, all our challenges. We first of all uh, need to solve self-consistently the MHD equations with the Boltzmann equation and if we want to go further we should add the uh, Fokker-Planck uh, uh, equation for the pickup ion distribution function and also solve it self consist Why the Fokker-Planck? Well, the Fokker-Planck e equation is just pitch angle average Boltzmann equation. And uh, uh, the distribution function of those non-thermal ions becomes spherical, isotropic pretty soon, but never a thermal equilibrium with background ions. So that's what is implemented in our multi-scale fluid kinetic simulation suite. Uh, we solve the Boltzmann equation of the adaptive mesh refinement uh, uh, grids. Uh, the Boltzmann equation is solved with the Monte Carlo method, which we use also particle splitting, because otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, you know why it matters. First of all, we have. NASA spacecraft, which uh, measure the properties of the solar wind at uh, very large distances from the sun. And now Voyager 1 is even beyond the solar, uh, the, the heliosphere, and is measuring directly in situ the properties of the interstellar medium. It's something unthinkable from the astrophysical viewpoint, right? So then uh, our model should be able to explain Voyager observations. And every Voyager observation is in reality a puzzle because up front nothing explains them. The problem is also with the boundary conditions. We don't know actually the boundary conditions of the solar surface. It's not, well, now it's better than it was a few years ago. But still, it's not enough to create a mathematically consistent uh, uh, formulation of the problem. On the other hand, the properties of the interstellar medium are also not very well known. Fortunately, there is another NASA spacecraft, which is called Interstellar Boundary Explorer, uh, which measures the fluxes of energetic neutral atoms from all over the space. That's 4 pi uh, solid angle. Energetic neutral atoms are created from 
non-thermal ions, because they are energetic, they have higher energy, when they experience secondary charge exchange, uh, so the, those non-thermal ions, we call them pickup ions, experience charge exchange, they create energetic neutral and which are measured. And from those, by feeding observations from the Interstellar Boundary Explorer, IBEX, we uh, gain some information about the interstellar uh, uh, medium. So there will be, uh, in 2018, it is planned to launch uh, another NASA mission, Solar Probe Plus, which will go closer to nine solar radiators toward the sun and will measure three-dimensional distribution functions like every second. Okay. So we should be prepared. Our codes in four, five, seven years should be able actually to reproduce those observations. So these are the challenges. Why blue waters? Well, I will talk about only two problems. It was one year of blue waters, which we used to discuss it was completely impossible to use it probably on, on Titan. We could do that. Uh, we need to, to analyze the stability of the heliopools, I will show you, and investigate the flow in the heliotail. Uh, we need to perform simulations which are of the order of six, sometimes seven orders of magnitude, uh, 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 smaller than the size of the computational region, while you still should resolve everything in the total computational region. Okay? So it's not like we can focus on only tiny details, and global scales are not important. Uh, this is a 20-year-old uh, uh, picture. The sun is over here at the center. Interstellar medium is from the right to the uh, flow is the, from the right to the left, and I show the streamlines. Okay, so uh, uh, this is super fast magnetosonic. We have a termination, heliosphere termination shock. As always, when two uh, streams collide, a tangential discontinuity is formed. It is called the heliopause in our case. Sometimes we have a bomb shock over here, but Bow shock is another very interesting problem, okay, because it's affected by neutral particles very much. But what I showed here, I assumed that interstellar medium uh, magnetic field is parallel to the uh, velocity vector, which is not right. But in this case, magnetic field lines here just coincide with uh, stream lines. And there we, uh, because this simulation 20 year old was actually symmetric, we disregarded in uh, heliospheric magnetic field altogether because it's not uh, actually symmetric. It's a little bit more realistic. Magnetic field in the interstellar medium is perpendicular uh, to the uh, velocity vector. In this case, you will see this is a, uh, the spiral of the Parker magnetic field, heliospheric magnetic field, just goes up and then flows downwind. And you see magnetic field lines which drape around some non-visible uh, uh, surface, which is seen right here. This is the heliopause. The heliopause is compressed by the magnetic field pressure, which is exerted perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. So magnetic, the heliopause is distorted, and the uh, magnetic field is not actually small here at the nose. Spacecraft, okay. Oh, okay, so that's, I cannot go up and down, though it's a little bit strange mode. Okay, and anyway. So the structure of the multi, uh, M of MS flux, as I told you, we solve MHD. Sometimes we use, instead of uh, solving the Fokker Planck we, uh, or the Boltzmann equation, we solve many Euler equations, gas dynamic equations, assuming that there are like five populations, different populations of neutral atoms which are created in different thermodynamically different regions and then propagate everywhere. And this is also possible. We use it up for mesh refinement, dynamic loads, low balance provided by Chamber, uh, pickup ions, Boltzmann equations, HDF5 for visualization. 
Uh, no, not much time to talk about the parallelization. Right here, we, uh, we show the parallelization strong and uh, weak on the next slide. Uh, <coughs> up to 120,000 cores. Uh, 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 it just continues to 160,000. We didn't try more than that. So, pretty linear, very nice. Uh, weak scaling, just nearly constant, sometimes even super scaling. Okay. Voyager observation. Voyager crossed the heliopause in 2012. More than a year and a half it took for the team to say that, oh, probably, uh, well, we agree that it crossed it because there were so many questions regarding it. First of all, it was too early. Nobody expected Voyager 1 actually to cross the heliopause and enter the interstellar medium so soon. We expected maybe five, six, seven more years. Okay? So, too close. Then, magnetic field observed beyond the heliopause turned out to be pretty similar to what was, what was observed before the crossing. That's two challenges. There were more particles, uh, energetic particles of the solar uh, origin disappeared. On the other hand, the flux of cosmic rays increased, so there were many questions. So, first question, uh, I will just disregard it. We need, uh, 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 there are some explanations. But why so close? Why so soon? This was really an interesting story. First of all, solar wind is not spherical symmetric. Okay, and I will show show you this. Uh, this is uh, radial velocity. So there is slow wind here and fast wind near the poles. But the latitudinal extent of slow wind is a function of time. Near minimum it's small and then goes to uh, 90 degrees uh, during solar maxima. This is the solar cycle simulations with the boundary conditions derived from uh, Ulysses uh, observations years are running over there. That's how it behaves. But the problem is also that the uh, rot uh, rotation axis and magnetic axis of the Sun, they do not coincide. And more or less, uh, the magnetic axis is moving and actually flipping every 11 years to another, to the opposite hemisphere. Okay? So now I... Sh oh, but this works somehow. Okay. So, okay, that's good. So, uh, this will be magnetic field. And you will see that magnetic field near the equatorial region is sometimes pretty small. Blue is small, okay, right here. So, again, as we continue the simulation, you see sometimes the magnetic field is large, but uh, near solar uh, minima, it's pretty small near the heliopause. That's what we needed. First of all, why, one should, why should we expect that the heliopause is a tangential discontinuity, a smooth one? It's not. Okay? So there are plenty of different types of instabilities over there. Kelvin Helmholtz, negative energy instability, Rayleigh Taylor instability caused by charge exchange, not by gravity, you know, gravity, but, but caused by charge exchange. Charge exchange creates those forces which uh, uh, create instability over a Rayleigh Taylor type. So, this is actually symmetric simulation, the one which I showed you previously. And you see that the heliopause is just very okay. no, smooth. The problem is that magnetic field in the actually symmetric magnetic field is zero here. And Voyager spacecraft goes at 30 degrees in this direction. Magnetic field is small near Voyager 1. In reality, it is in this simulation. But in reality, it's not small. Okay. Now, this is the magnetic equator shown here, the global heliospheric current sheet. And the current sheet, sooner or later, uh, becomes so dense that magnetic field annihilates due to magnetic reconnection. So this is actually shown on another simulation we did, a spontaneous transition to turbulent behavior uh, due to instability of the heliospheric current sheet. So, 
rally tail instability. Without magnetic field, always heliopause is always violently unstable. Magnetic field can stabilize. There is magnetic field on the inner side of the heliopause, on the other side, on the interstellar side. So uh, when you use that without interstellar, uh, a heliospheric magnetic field, everything is violently unstable. So what we did, we performed several simulations. One of them, without heliospheric magnetic field, we see instabilities. With heliospheric but without interstellar magnetic field, pretty smooth. Uh, both fields there, very smooth. But we know that during solar cycle, sometimes magnetic field becomes small. At that time, heliopause is destabilized, and we observe this violent instability, and the heliopause becomes closer to, uh, uh, to the sun, approximately but 20 astronomical units, which is enough to explain Voyager 1 observations. I will show you the animation of this instability. Voyager 1 is here. This is uh, its current direction of the Voyager 1 trajectory. We explained that. Astrotails. These are observable. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, uh, mirror astrotail. Okay. This one, carbon star RC plus something. Okay. Completely different. Very much different from the previous. But we can see them. We cannot see the heliotail. Okay. But we can model it. And that's what we did. It was possible only with uh, uh, Blue Water's resources, and mostly because the tail is long. And this one, in this case, we just calculated to 5,000 astronomical units, but we know for sure that uh, it will disappear, maybe the tail. There will be no difference between the stellar medium and the solar wind at approximately 20,000 astronomical units from the sun. <coughs> Magnetic field compresses the heliopause, violently unstable over there. Uh, magnetic field inside the heliopause, pretty sophisticated. Uh, these are simulation of the time dependence, and this is magnetic field in the heliotail. Why do we need that? These long helotail simulations are of extraordinary importance, it appears, to explain the observations of uh, uh, cosmic ray anisotropy at energies above one tera electron volt. It's observed anisotropy, indeed, it's, we already submitted a paper to Astrophysical Journal on that. It's pretty nicely the presence of that long helotail explains that tiny anisotropy in uh, high energy uh, cosmic rays. Okay, so I just go there. Uh, in the future, we need a more uh, resolution actually to be able to compare with Voyager observations along that trajectory in real time. The problem is that Voyager measures magnetic field every 14 seconds. It's pretty tough for this code, actually, to have resolution which allows you to resolve structures like that. But in principle, it is possible. And this is a grand challenge, and I hopefully will report on that next year. Thank you very much for your attention.